All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, rest the Druid. Druid, until I got higher up, was actually really, really easy to kind of push rating on. And the reason for that, I'll, I'll go down more in detail. I'll go over more in detail in a minute, but pretty easy to get to, to work on and, and grind initially. I think the higher I got, you know, 24, 2500 or so when I'm pushing, you know, the top of the top rating around 22 or 23, I would say is when it started. It became a little bit more difficult just because people were obviously a lot better at knowing when to swap to me as a target because I don't have I don't have hots on myself. People are a lot better at stopping clones or being able to line clones. Those are the things that's going to make Druid good, in my opinion. I think Druid is going to be very, very successful in Shuffle. If you are able to spam Cyclone, if you are able to get re-stealth, you know, you can press a re-stealth into a rake stun on a target. You can also press a re-stealth and, you know, kind of drop combat for a second unsuspectedly and press a bash on your target as well. And then you can also press Cyclone off that. So typically this is what Druid's going to do, right? They're going to stay max range as much as they can. And if they are against something that doesn't really have as many interrupts, so let's say you're against a Demo Lock or a Shatter Priest, you know, stuff that doesn't really have a consistent interrupt or a consistent range interrupt the way you know a mage or a hunter does or you know an affliction lock or a destro lock so these things that can kind of shut you down when it comes to clones if they don't have it on the team you can definitely take advantage of that on a dresser druid you can run in you can press your stun you can press a cyclone on somebody they can't really stop it so these are the things that druids are going to be able to do especially a lower rating that can help carry the game a lot of you i'm sure that are watching the video have dealt with druids and shuffle you know, let's say you're 1800, 1900, you're playing a warrior, right? You're, you're thinking to yourself, okay, we're just going to go on the, the warlock. We're going to be able to kill this guy and it'll be easy. And the enemy rest of Druid is making your life miserable. He's making you rage. He's making you upset. Your teammates aren't stopping any clones. This is what he's doing. He's running up and he's just doing this. He's just doing this over and over. He's just pressing clone on you the entire game. He's pressing clone. He's pressing root. And these are the things that druids are going to need to do, I think, to kind of climb and shuffle. And these are the things that they're going to do to obviously make the other team, you know, kind of play worse or get frustrated. And it's definitely going to set you apart from the other druids or, or the healers that you're fighting when it comes to, to climbing rating. So opener wise, pretty simple. You know, the gates are going to open. You're going to have your buff up already. You're going to have a Mark of the Wild, obviously 3% verse, a very, very big deal. You're going to normally try to have a life bloom on one guy. Life bloom the other target. What you can do as well is you can also just have an early rejuve on them as well. That's the most important thing in terms of your healing. Life bloom is huge for rest of druids. So keeping up amazing and just infinite life bloom up time is going to help you with your HPS. You can see my healing. Life bloom is just disgustingly good for rest of druid. So having good life bloom up time is what's going to help you feel more stable on rest of druid and and make it so that you're not having these panic moments of you know, you can't, I can't go for clone or I can't go for bash or CC because my team's dying. And that's because you're probably not keeping up your adaptive swarm as much as you can, which buffs your hot effectiveness. You're probably not keeping up your sun ward and you are most likely not keeping up life bloom and, and making sure that you proc the bloom, which you can use at the last five seconds. I believe, I think it's still five seconds to actually proc the life bloom effect because the life bloom effect is going to be huge. And so you have this sound that gives you more mastery for having life bloom. So life bloom gives you three stacks of mastery as opposed to, you know, obviously one. And you have this sound called budding leaves. So this is why life bloom uptime is really, really big. This is why it's important to not ever have life bloom drop because each time your life bloom heals, it gets a healing increase. So if you're letting your life bloom drop consistently, if you're letting the life bloom fall off, if you're not managing it well, or it's getting purged a lot and you're not be able to keep it up while you're getting CC'd or keep it up through CC as best as you can, then you're missing out on up to 90% healing increase. Pretty sure in PVP it is lower, but regardless, you are missing out on maximum life bloom healing because if you're ever letting it fall for whatever reason, let's say you're trying to go for a clone or you're spamming four clones in a row on the entire team and you let all of your hots fall off, then all of a sudden your life bloom is now doing the normal amount of healing as opposed to, you know, 60, 70% buffed healing. So life bloom uptime, I would say is really, really important, um, which is why even in, in your opener, so to speak, for your healing, you want to make sure you have a life bloom out, 
You know, you get a life plume, you get a rejuve, you can life plume your other target as well. And then especially, this is this is very, very important, especially if you're kind of on a team or in a composition in shuffle where you don't really have any stuns. So you get a life plume out, you get a rejuve, you can life plume your other teammate as well. Go re-stealth, you go into prowl, okay? So you go into stealth, and now you're in a position where you can either open up on the healer and get a clone on them and go for CC early, or you can stun the DPS, right? Which a lot of people opt to do. You know, I've fought no guard plenty of times. And what he would do a lot of the shuffle rounds is he'd put up his hots, like I said, he'd put up his life bloom on his teammates. He would go stealth and it was super frustrating to deal with on every healer that I played for the most part. He would come out of stealth. He would leap to me across the map, open on me, and most likely I'm behind the pillar, right? Most likely I'm over here. My teammates are 20, 30 yards away from me. So he'd open up on me and then just cast clone. So now we're in a position where the enemy Druid, which is going to be you, get ready to be active, get ready to go hard, okay? We're gonna need more Cyclones. The Druid's gonna run in. They're gonna have their hots out already. They're gonna go in stealth. The second the battle, the fight starts, a lot of times the Druid will run in, they stun the healer, they cast a clone on them, and boom. Now your healer that you're playing with, you know, let's say you're playing a DK, you're fighting a rest of Druid, all of a sudden the game starts, you notice that your healer gets stunned into a clone. Your healer is out of the game for 10 seconds. So 10 seconds, your healer is out of the game. And now they're off to a, a huge head start with pressure because you're obviously getting CC'd. Your healer probably hasn't set up their, their spells yet. They probably don't have their Holy Shocks out of their Pally. They probably don't have Tears Deliverance out already. They, you know, if, you're, if you have a Druid on your team, your Druid probably doesn't have Hots out and now you're falling behind. So. Huge, huge thing for Druid, I would say, opener-wise. In terms of healing, you obviously want to have a Life Bloom out or two Life Blooms out as well. Life Bloom one target, Life Bloom the other target. You can have a Rejuve on them early as well. You go in Stealth. If the game is about to start, if people are running in, they're pressing their CDs, what you can do is you can either stun the DPS to peel. Kind of depends on the team you have. You know, if you if you have classes that don't really have a lot of stuns, like a Hunter or something, that's always going to stun the healer into a trap. What you can do instead, let's say you stun the kill target, right? You stun the kill target with rake, you target the off target, you can bash them, and then you can clone them. Your hunter is going to take care of CC on the healer, and now you have basically what is called in arena as a 3v1 situation, where that main target that was in the rake stun initially has zero help from his team, and you can kind of collapse on them and, and, and get a lot of pressure from there. So I would say the biggest thing, you know, to reiterate again on Druid, you're going to have your life bloom out. Life bloom up time is key. Always, 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 always have good life bloom up time. But typically in an opener, you'll have life bloom on two people. You'll have a rejuve normally on one guy, if possible as well. You'll go stealth and you'll try to look to stun either the kill target or stun the healer into a clone. And same thing as every healer. Like I've said, it's all kind of situational. If you're on a team that has a lot of stuns and it's harder for them to CC the healer, you know, you don't have the hunter on your team, then you can stun the healer into a clone. If you have a hunter on your team or someone that can CC the healer easier or you know easier than other classes, then you can save your stun with rake for the opener on a DPS. You can either stun the main target, you can either you can stun the off target and clone them. And from then on, it's the same, you know? If your target is already getting attacked and you, the enemy team's popping cooldowns, what you can do is you can try to have an innervate out early. You can have your send ward, you extend your send ward with a swift mend, then you can either save your soul to forest for a, a nature swiftness regrowth. You can iron bark them. You know, if they're taking a, a ton of damage, let's say the mage is popping arcane surge. You know, you have an arcane mage. He pressed arcane surge. He's blasting. He's pressing, you know, touch of the magi on your teammate. If you have hots up, hots up on them already. You have your sun ward. You can iron bark them. So now they have iron bark. They have full hots. If you are playing Verdancy, which I think mo most of you should, Verdancy is really, really good for just kind of having AOE healing as well. If you're in this situation where they're popping a lot of CDs, you already should have a couple hots out. You kind of refresh your hots. You pop your sun ward, you extend it. You have your Dazzle Swarm up already. If you already have it up beforehand, that'll get extended as well. Now you have all these hots up, you have a mushroom down, and your teammate is taking zero damage. This is where being comfortable on Druid is going to be important. Because what's going to happen typically on Druid when you play them and when you're playing it yourself is you're going to have this. This is kind of the Druid gameplay. And this is why, you know, for those of you who have watched my stream or YouTube videos a lot, I've always given Druids a bit of criticism, all right? Because, you know, I, I'm not a fan of the of the 
sit back and heal play style. You know, unfortunately, the way Druid is designed with keeping up hots, you have to eventually learn when it's a good time to press clone. But this is what your game's gonna look like. You're gonna sit back, your mushroom's gonna be down. You don't wanna spam mushroom too much, especially if people are moving and you're replacing it every four seconds because then you're spending a lot of mana. But you're gonna have your mushroom down, your hots, your send ward, you're gonna extend it, you're sitting back, you're healing, life is good, you're just sitting here. And this is where it becomes crucial on Druid to feel comfortable because you are gonna have these moments where let's say we have full hots, right? Now is where you kind of have to decide when you can push in. So if your teammate's full health, you have full hots out, you have full blooms, you know, if you're able to somehow drop combat, what you can do is you can also regrowth behind the pillar because you have a talent right here where your regrowth, whoever you cast it on, it's always gonna cast on the target with life bloom as well. So what you can do to have max uptime on Druid is if your max range, you know, you're pressing your heals, maybe your team's full health and you wanna go for a restealth. You wanna go for a restealth or you wanna get aggressive. What you can do to ensure that they have full hots is you can run, you know, in a, in a safe spot, either behind the pillar or if they don't have any kicks, you can just cast a regrowth on yourself. Especially if you have clear casting procs, you wanna take advantage of that. Clear casting makes it so it has no mana cost. So if you're ever in that situation, you can stay either far away where they can't kick you, you can stay by the, behind the pillar. You cast the regrowth and boom, the regrowth is applied to the target with life bloom as well. So now you have even more hots. Now you have more mastery benefit as well. And then you can maybe go for a restealth because casting a regrowth on yourself is not going to keep you in combat. And sometimes, and this is very, very important. I really want everyone to pay attention. If you are playing Druid, a huge mistake people make is they try really, really hard to just clone the entire time. Now, I'm not saying it's bad to press clone. But you have to be careful and you have to be cautious of when it's okay, which obviously takes time, when it's not. So let's say your team is dying, but you need to get some sort of CC, right? You get a restealth, you can CC the guy. What you can do is if you're if you already have hots out or you're worried about your hots falling, but you have already gotten a restealth, you can restealth, you can run in, you can stun the target, and then you can run away and you can heal again. You don't have to worry about cloning the target. You don't have to worry about cloning them two times, three times, swapping the clone to the other guy. Just getting that stun alone, especially if you're on a, on a heal, if you're CCing the healer with the stun and your teammates are able to follow up off that, you know, it's deep dampening. Let's say you're 60, 70% dampening. You're able to somehow get a restealth and stun the healer. You don't have to worry about getting the clone, especially if your teammates are low, you know? If your teammates are dying and you, you have enough time to get one CC, Get that one CC and then go back to healing. You don't have to worry about, you know, I'm gonna stun the guy and then I'm gonna press clone and then I'm gonna press clone again and then I'm gonna press clone again. And all of a sudden you're in 70% dampening, your teammates died because you fell behind. You're sitting there trying to spend, you know, four, five, six seconds getting all this CC. And while this is happening, your hots are falling, your team's slowly dying and dampening is kicking in. So now you go from being in a good position where you can be offensive and you're gonna be able to close out the game soon because of that rake stun you had. Or maybe you get a random, you know, vortex on someone. You can bash someone and if they try to trinket and run away, you can vortex them too. You have some little outplay that you do, but you're so focused on getting the clone and spamming Cyclone that you fall behind and you lose the round, right? It's not a good feeling, it happens a lot. Plenty of Druids do this. You know, it's it's something that happens every single time I play Shuffle. I see rest of Druids that they'll sit there, their teammates are dying. They'll run up to me. They'll try to cast a clone, kind of free cast it or, or thinking that they need to be super aggressive at the time instead of just healing. I'm on my Demon Hunter. I'll stun them or I'll press my, my Imprison on them. And then all of a sudden they're behind because they're going to get out of that CC. I'm going to be too far from them to clone. Their hots are going to be fading and now they're losing the game, right? So huge, huge thing for Druid. And I know people are gonna watch this and be like, oh my God, why can't you just tell me when to do it? It's all situational, you know? This is how PVP goes. You, you can't really say what to do in every single situation because it's all gonna depend on what is happening, how many hots you have, do they have their cooldowns up? Is your teammate lining you? Is your teammate not kiting the DPS enough? Is the Warlock you're fighting casting Chaos Bolts nonstop? Are you on DR for CC? So if you push in, it's too risky. Like there's a lot of things that can impact that. So I would say that's gonna take time, but a huge, huge mistake that people make is they think that because just because they're playing a Druid that they need to sit there and do this. If you're doing this the whole time, 
you're most likely going to lose the game. If you're doing it the entire time and you're not pressing any heals, right? If your team's dying and that's what you're doing, you're probably going to lose. Now, with that being said, there are moments where you can do that. You know, I mentioned this earlier. If you have full hots, you know, look at this target. You have full hots. You have every single thing available. Full hots. You have everything. Iron bark, mushroom, every single hot in the game with overgrowth. Now is the time you can maybe clone. Now you can run up. It's like, oh, hey, look, it's a demon hunter. I'm going to clone this guy. And then you go back to healing. And then all of a sudden the clone's ending. You're like, eh, I'm going to clone him again. And you can go back to healing. These are the things that are going to make you excel on Druid and are what's going to help you climb rating. Because the Druids that sit there and they, you know, they press a clone on one guy and then they look at the other guy and they press a, a root on them, the next global. And then they look at another guy and they try to go run up and bash them. Like they're doing all of these things for, you know, four, five, six, seven seconds instead of making sure that they have good uptime on their healing spells. And they're going to fall behind and they're going to either fall behind too far to where they die because it's too high dampening and they don't have hots out or they're going to fall behind in the sense of getting cc'd at the wrong time because they're too busy casting root and then now their teammates die right so you kind of have to learn when to be able to be aggressive or when to even be defensive with your clones and go for that but i think it is something that you have to be you have to just take time with, with and, and practice to get better at it it's not going to be something you're going to pick up instantly you know for me as well, I, I played Druid a lot over the years, but it's always been a healer for me that has taken a, a little bit of time to adjust to. You know, it takes me a few days when I start playing it again to feel comfortable. And that's how it was for me in Solo Shuffle. At first, it was really easy. I'm pushing rating. The higher rating I got, it became a bit harder. And all of a sudden, the mistakes that I was making where I would, you know, run in, I press clone at the wrong time. And then boom, my teammates die. My hots fall off. And then now I'm trying to play catch up. So for me, it was the same thing. It takes time to get used to. If you're able to feel comfortable and practice enough to where you are comfortable with knowing, okay, I have overgrowth iron bark on this guy. I can run up to a DPS and cast cyclone on them. Even if you get kicked and that's something that also, you know, same thing, keyword, word of the day, situational. It's always going to depend on what's happening. There are moments where you have every hot in the world up and you can run up and cast a clone and get kicked. And there are moments where you can't. So if cooldowns are already done, the enemy team already pressed their CDs, the monk already pressed serenity, and you already have you have full hots out, the monk pressed serenity already, there's no avatar, recklessness, or whatever from the warrior. These are the moments where it's like, okay, well, I have full hots. I can just run up and I can press clone. And now their team is falling even more behind, okay? Because their pressure is fading. The warrior is kind of alone. He's not really, he's not getting peeled or or getting extra pressure from his from his teammate doing damage. And that's what's going to help you win these games. Obviously, the higher rating you get, people are going to be a lot more disruptive. It's going to be a lot harder to run up and just start cloning people forever. But even at higher ratings, you are going to have those moments where it feels like the druid is just unstoppable which has happened many times for, you know, a lot of players at high rating. You can look at players like Nogard on Druid or Danny Carey, who is an absolute freak and has like nine rest of Druids or something and plays on EU as well. Whenever you fight him in Shuffle, for those who are maybe high rated watching, watching the YouTube video right now, if you ever fight Danny Carey, it's the same thing every game. He has a few hots out and he is literally just ruthless. He's just spamming clone. He's got full hots out. And a mushroom and he just clones your teammate so he's like oh i'm just gonna clone your shadow priest clone your shadow priest three times and it's like hmm, i'm gonna clone your healer clone your healer three times oh i'm gonna refresh my hots a little bit and then he targets you you get pain subbed by your healer or your 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 healer presses blessing of sacrifice on you and he's like you know what i'm just gonna clone you as well so he's cloning you know 20 30 times a game and the reason he can do that is because he knows when it's good and knows when it's bad. And he's very comfortable with knowing when to be aggressive and having good uptime on his hots. So that's something that everyone can kind of work towards and, and get to that point. But it is going to take time. So you just have to be patient. You have to understand the importance of hots and, and get used to knowing, okay, I got full hots in the sky with iron bark. I can clone. Or I have full hots with this, on this guy with iron bark. I can re-stealth and stun the healer. So... These are the things that's gonna separate you. And I really hope that whoever's watching, if you watch this and 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 see some of these, some of these little tips and tricks and, and some advice, 
that it helps you climb rating because there is no sweeter feeling when you're playing any of these games, no matter what it is, than climbing rating. Like once you get a few wins in a row, you're feeling yourself, you're going plus 20, plus 20, you know, you five won a lobby, you're going up rating. It's always a nice feeling to, to know that you're making progress. And I think if you kind of listen and follow some of the advice today that I think it is very, very possible for you. Don't be too worried about standing there pressing clone. Don't worry about targeting your teammate hotting and then like standing there trying to fake cast clone okay because doing this is gonna lose you the game if it's the first 10 seconds and i know i'm gonna be watching okay i'm gonna be watching all of your games if it's the first 10 seconds and you're just doing this you're gonna be losing the game so you don't want to be the person that's too fixated on getting the cc if you try to get the cc and you got stopped or you you got a rake stun and they're already pressing damage go back to healing and once your team is stable then you can try to go for cc again I would say if you can kind of get used to that and master that, then your your rating is going to go up. It'll certainly go up on Rest of Druid. And that's that.